Okay, and this is a typical winch off the front of a 4 before, which has been neglected. It's been sat on there for months. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, so we're going to go through it step by step to see uh, what is working, what's not working. Uh, strip it down and then rebuild it and hopefully be sat on the front of the 4 before again, uh, ready to do some more action. Okay. Firstly, I'm going to show you the uh, elements uh, of the winch. Uh, we have here uh, the, the remote lead, which plugs into what is called the control pack. And then there's a switch one direction, the other direction, which operates the winch. This is the control pack, as I, as I said. Um, within this control pack, there are four solenoids, two to go in one direction, two for the other direction. That then sends the current to the motor, which is underneath here. There's a, uh, a rod which comes from the motor right across into this part, which is the gearbox. Uh, within this gearbox is a set of planetary gears which reduces the speed of the motor uh, to then enable to turn this drum at a lot slower speed, uh, producing the power. Within this drum is a brake assembly. Uh, when the winch is being pulled in, then the brake assembly is released. Uh, as soon as it's stopped, then the brake is uh, applied, which stops you fall before going down uh, a hill if you're being pulled up an incline. If we take this cover off, here we have uh, the solenoids, one, two, three, four, um, and the various small connections are from the control socket, uh, which marries up with the, the, the lead. Uh, as I say, there are two solenoids for one direction, two solenoids for the other direction. Each one has to work uh, to do its job. Uh, the main feed, uh, if it's still on the four-wheel drive, will have the red connection to it like so. If that isn't there, then generally on most winches, there will be the feed for your control lead, uh, and that is the, the main uh, positive connection. So because it's, this is off the car, um, there's the main positive connection. It's loose, uh, so that's an indication that that is the positive uh, lead which has been taken off the vehicle. So that's the, the positive uh, connection sorted. Then if we tip the winch up, underneath here we have the earth connection and uh, we've just got to make sure that it's all nice and clean. This is a bit, bit grubby but not too bad. The bolt is quite clean so now we can put on our earth wire. Got to make sure that we put this back on as well. This is the earth to the uh, control pack because uh, everything needs uh, the positive and negative. So we put that one in there. And again, just snug. It doesn't need to be really, really tight. Okay, I'll give it some live. Okay, now I'm gonna take the remote. I'm gonna just have a look inside. On this winch, we've got uh, some sockets in there and pins in the remote. We just need to make sure that they're clean. Uh, sometimes these will go a bit green with water that's introduced uh, and it starts to corrode. But this one's quite good, uh, so I know we're okay with this. So we'll put this in here. And we'll take our lead and then test to see what we've got. Just bearing in mind in safety, this, uh, this is, it can be potentially dangerous. Uh, it's better to keep your fingers away from, from the drum uh, and, and just just be aware uh, that things could happen. Um, I've actually put on my battery pack here uh, a place where if things do go pear-shaped, I can just quickly snap it apart like so. Um, if it's on your four-wheel drive uh, and you're testing, obviously it's good practice to always have an isolator switch on your winch. So if something does go wrong, you can quickly whip around and turn your isolator switch off. First of all, I'm gonna try it one way and see what happens. And there we have a click. So that is telling me solenoids are working. They're clicking over, uh, but the motor's not turning. We'll go the other way. Same again. Uh, motor is not turning, solenoids are clicking. This doesn't mean the solenoids are okay. It means they're getting power. Uh, within here is an electrical coil, and there's a, a, a piece of, if I use a spanner, and my two fingers, there's your contacts, and here's uh, a piece of metal, when the solenoid is energized, 
the piece of metal is thrown up and those two then make contact. Now, this could be clicking and being thrown up and there's bad connections on there. Um, it could be that it's like clicking part way. Um, there's lots of things that can be going on here which we can have a look at in a minute. But uh, this is telling me, obviously, we've got issues. <clears throat> so that's this bit just checked for the moment. So I've got in my mind we've got a problem here. Now I'm just going to go over to the gearbox to see if we've got any problems here just initially. Gearbox is either what we call locked, where we can't turn the drum and we rely on the motor to turn the drum, or we put it in what's called free spool. And that's you disengage the gearbox so that then this drum will turn and the cable can be pulled, pulled out uh, to where you need to go. On this particular winch is this lever here, uh, turned 180 degrees, and then that will then become uh, unlocked. It's in free spool. So I try and turn it, and there's my first problem already on the gearbox. I can't turn that. This is quite common on winches that have been left alone for some time. Um, water gets inside them. There's a gear in this one which slides across, um, and it's not being able to. So that could be water is rusted. Uh, lots of things could be going on in, in here. So second problem. Okay, we're going to uh, deal with this, this side of things at the moment. We've got solenoid issues. Uh, possibly motor. Uh, in my mind I'm thinking because uh, I can't go in or out um, that could be the motor rather than solenoids. Generally with solenoids um, you'll get one that goes wrong and so then there's one direction that you can't go in. Uh, the other direction you can because the other solenoids are okay. But we're going to test each solenoid to make sure that these are working before I go down that route. All you need to do that is just a standard straightforward test lamp. We put our earth on the battery and then we test if we've got the power there, which we have. Now, to do this, what we need to do is click the switch over and then test the solenoids. Now, I know because this is a worn, uh, the green wire means going in, uh, so I can go to that one immediately. So I'm going to try and pull it in there that solenoid is getting life from my control switch because there's the power. So my next test of that solenoid because it's getting its power there and at rest there's no power there. Uh, when I activate this solenoid there should be power coming here. So I activate it and there we go. That was a bad connection on the light. So that solenoid is good. So because there's two, I need to check the next one. I'm going for the green wire again, which is this one up here. So I check that that green wire is getting life, first of all, which it is. And <coughs> so now this one should be going live uh, when I click it over, which it is there. I'll check that one, which it is there as well. So that tells me that those two solenoids are good. But I'll check the other two solenoids as well. On a worn, this is, this is uh, on with this one, it's black wire here. So life there, no life there at rest. We check that that's getting life, which it is. The small wire from my pack here. And we see if this is going life, which it is. We go across to the second solenoid. Just check the little wire, it's getting life, and again, these should, that one's not getting it, look. So let's check this side, that one is, make sure we've got a good connection, yeah, that one is as well. So, it's very important so to make sure, you've got, make sure you've got a good connection on your lead light. Uh, every so often it's worth just putting it on the main lead just to make sure the light's okay. Check that again, there. So this is telling me that all four of these solenoids are fine. If, for any reason, uh, we were testing a solenoid and it didn't light up when we clicked it over, then uh, that is saying that, that solenoid is dodgy. Uh, we would then have to just take this out, renew that solenoid, um, and uh, that should fix 
the problem. But as I said before, this is going uh, is not working in either direction. Uh, so there would have to be two solenoids that didn't work. Uh, one on one side, one direction, one on the other side, that direction. Uh, but as I said before, these are working fine. The motor is getting its current. So my next stage is to go to the motor because it's the motor that, that, that I feel is the problem. Right, the first thing I'm going to do, and this is the most important thing, is to remember to disconnect the power lead. Uh, otherwise, we can have a few sparks flying when we're uh, take, taking things to pieces. What we need to do now is to get rid of this control pack. So I'll take the, uh, the positive wires out of the way, first of all, then the earth. If it was still on, on the front of your 4x4, uh, this is at the stage that you now would take it off. Just one thing to point out, uh, on a worn, if you're working on a worn, um, we always pretty much think that red means positive for some reason. Uh, worn decided in the early days that they were going to use red wire for negative, so just be aware of that on a worn winch. Um, all winches do, do vary, uh, but as I said before, this is pretty much a generic winch. A lot of winches are based on this idea. So we need to take off this bracket. Okay comes away like so. And now we have three connections on the motor and peel these rubber boots back. And a lot of motors uh, you have a terminal which is F1 and it's stamped on the motor. There's F1 stamped there. At the back is uh, F2, so it's F1, F2 and an A terminal. So F1, F2 and A. On the, on the warns, if they're quite new, um, they have got it written on there, uh, F1, F2, and A. And I make my own marks, just to make sure it all goes back in the same place. And I leave A blank, and I just put one line on there, and two lines on there. There's my F1, F2, and A. These terminals, when being undone can turn they must not be allowed to turn because what happens inside that will twist off part of the motor uh, which will ruin your motor so by holding on to the wire at the same time as turning and watch the stud and as you undo that the stud didn't move and the spanner moved so that nut is undone and that's fine if they try to move, you can put another spanner on there and just make sure that that one's tight. Uh, and then you're going to try and just undo things uh, without that stud turning. Again, I say, I can't uh, stress the point strong enough, that must not be allowed to turn. Watch the stud, and that's trying to turn. So I put pressure on that wire to stop it turning around, and pressure on there, and this one is a tight one. So I need to get my spanner on here. And just tighten this enough a bit. And then he's undone. Right, this, uh, there's four of these big screws on the side here. Uh, and within, within this motor are four magnets. Uh, and these are holding those magnets in place. Uh, so we don't uh, need to undo those. Uh, just we need to leave them alone. Uh, otherwise the magnets will come loose within the motor. Most motors are held on uh, to these winches with two bolts at the back. These, these bolts run the length of the motor and are screwed into this end dose in here. And as we undo, we've just got to be aware of how much pressure we need to put on them because it's a long bolt and they will twist uh, and they will snap. Uh, so we've just got to be careful on undoing and I can feel already that's undoing nicely. Just if uh, you think this is going to snap, uh, one possibility we can do is to undo this other bar here. So we undo this bar, we pull this apart, we have to draw in the motor. Put that to one side. We can now look at this face here and uh, we can see uh, 
the end of the threads that correspond with that bolt. And if I get a screw and clean out that hole either side, what could be done is to try and, and put some penetrating oil down through there, leave it for a while uh, in the hope that it will unseize. So with a warn, there is another set of holes, which is 90 degrees uh, in, out from there. The motor can be turned and use those holes with some new bolts if you can't drill these out. But that's okay as long as where it's mounted, it doesn't interfere with the bumper or the, or the, the back of your, or sorry, the front of your four wheel drive. Um, you know, this, this can be turned, but it does present its problems. Ideally, um, it needs to be, be, to be like so. I'm just wiggling the motor here, uh, which enables the bolt to, to undo a bit, a bit easier. And then we take it take it out. So that's the two bolts undone. Now the motor can be withdrawn. Within this part of uh, the winch uh, is a bearing uh, and that bearing supports the motor at this end. Very often on a winch that hasn't been used for a while, uh, it's been sat on the front of the four-wheel drive for some time, uh, the motor rusts onto that bearing and as you withdraw the, the motor, part of the motor stays. At this stage that's not a big deal um, because that's what happens and we can deal with that uh, but ideally uh, you want to take the motor off in one assembly so what you have to do is just gently slide this back and look inside and see if everything's coming. With this one it is, I can see already that the spindle on the end of the motor is coming as well if not, what you can do is just grab a screwdriver and poke in and try and lever everything with it, like so. Everything's coming with that motor. If I turn this, I can see now that this has had some water in it and uh, things are a bit corroded in there. Uh, so that's not a huge problem. Uh, it just makes me and helps me assess what's going on with this winch at the moment. Uh, as you can see, it looks quite a new motor. Um, it's not too bad, it's just very grotty and grubby. What I need to do now is just take this end off and gently tap. And get this cap off the end of the motor. And we need to hold the motor spindle at one end and just gently lever this off like so. I can pretty much tell the issue with this motor here. Uh, if we look at this surface, uh, it's very, 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 very grubby. What should it look like? If I just get a piece of emery cloth and just do that, you can now see the copper and we've got some serious bad connections between these brushes and the armature. So this looks to me at the moment a good clean up uh, and we'll be back on the road. Uh, so now we need to take this piece out of this piece and because these brushes are spring loaded if you just pull it out, yes, it will fly to pieces, um, but uh, they're all connected by these wires, so that things aren't going to drop on the floor. But it's a lot easier uh, to, uh, on this particular motor, what we can do is hook this wire just around the back of here, like what so. That, what that and what that does now, that holds the brush in place because it can't fall out down through there, the spring is pushing against it, but it won't fall out. So I'll turn it around and I'll do the same with this one. So now with those brushes hooked up on there, uh, we can gently start to pull the centre of the winch out. As you see, this piece is coming with it. 
and they we have the two parts. You can see already there's the nice clean that's how that should look uh, and obviously is not just just a very grubby grubby motor. What we need to check is that these brushes are free to go in and out nicely because uh, one of the problems that we do get is these brushes stick in here uh, then is worn away and because they can't be continually pressed on there we lose the connection that's another reason why the motors won't work so these brushes are going to be free to go in and out and so we go around and check each one again that one's moving that's good uh, it's very typical uh, fault on a winch is for brushes to be stuck these these can be cleaned up uh, but uh, don't be tempted to spray uh, a penetrating oil uh, on these uh, I've done it in the past uh, and what happens then when you put it back together again uh, the penetrating oil there's still a residue left and that then ends up putting a, a residue on the armature and then you get a bad connection after a very short period of time uh, these can be wiped off washed off but not coated with uh, with penetrating oil. Uh, the best thing, if you've got access to, to an airline in, in a workshop, great, blow it all out. If not, you just need to pop these brushes out very gently so the spring doesn't fly around and uh, just clean them off. Bit of emery tape, just get rid of all the grub. Now, as we look in here, um, going back to what I said earlier about these studs not being allowed to twist. We've got the windings of the motor there coming up and soldered on the end of that stud. So obviously if that stud's twisting that will break that off uh, and make a mess. There's a gap there and a gap there. These winches are designed that water can go in and it can come right out again. Um, but uh, as we saw on this motor it was sat in water for a while and then when it was out of the, out of the water it wasn't used again and so we've got just uh, corrosion started uh, and it, was, it wasn't dried out, it just needed to be used um, but the, the, the worst thing of, of winches sitting on the front of a four wheel drive is they just don't get used enough um, they just sit there and sit there and sit there um, and it may just they, they will then let you down. Winches, they just like to be used all the time, just keeps them going. Right, what I need to do is to, to clean this up. Um, I'm going to take this part uh, and uh, use a piece of emery tape and clean the armature up, clean this rust off of here. I'll be using an airline, um, you can use a compressor or whatever, just to blow out all the dust on this part. Then I can inspect it to make sure it's, it's okay. Uh, same with the brushes, we'll be cleaning all these off with the emery tape, blowing it out with the airline, and also cleaning up these magnets, scraping out all this loose stuff here, uh, and just giving it a good blowout, uh, and then again I can in inspect it and make sure everything's okay. Uh, what I do go over it afterwards is uh, uh, what they call scotch block, uh, which is a bodywork thing really, but it does perfect job on stuff like this. Just cleans it up, smooths it up nicely. When the motor gets really hot, uh, these are soldered uh, together here. These wires are soldered. You can't see this because it's underneath here, uh, but you do notice sometimes silver patches. With this one, this is a, it's, it's a worn motor as well, but it's for a different, different model. Uh, we can see that this has got so hot, the solder's started to run, because uh, this is silver. Uh, and it's been run out to the point that one of the windings has let go uh, and has come away. Uh, that motor is uh, pretty useless now. Uh, also, these segments here uh, will rise up, and so when the brushes come along here, it hits uh, that part. So you have to make sure that these are all nicely smooth and in line, hasn't got hot. This motor is a good motor. Uh, it hasn't been used a lot, uh, so this is in very good condition. Uh, it doesn't look as, like it's got hot at all. Again, on, on the initial inspection, it was a contact issue, and this is telling me uh, all the same. It was just a contact issue on this part of the armature. Another thing to check is the bearing on the end of here. 
Yeah, it's all nice and smooth. This one's nice and smooth. I've now cleaned that up, blown it out. The bearing's good. No soda around here. All these are nice and level. They're not let go. So that's ready for uh, putting back together again. There we go to put this uh, part of the motor back together again. We take our spring. We put the spring into its holder. We'll face it that way. Get a brush. Yeah, make sure it's all nice and clean. Put the brush in. Put it back and hook that wire in place to keep it in. What I didn't mention, but I mentioned now, is um, these brushes. They're quite uh, quite good. They're not much longer than that from new. Uh, so there's plenty of life left in that brush. If we were down, coming down to about this amount left, uh, then we'd be needing a new brush pack. Now, obviously, every winch isn't the same. Uh, all variation of the theme. With these, I can hook that wire in and it holds in. Some might be a different type of spring, but you just need to look at the, uh, the brush pack uh, and find a way of being able to hold those brushes in. Uh, usually there is a way uh, to do it, because otherwise assembly is, is, is quite difficult. You just need to look inside this end cap now as well, ready for putting it back together again. Again, you can see here where it's been sat in that water. We just need to get rid of all this. Right, now we've got... Uh,